Hey guys, today I'm going to tell you one of my biggest pet peeves about Magic the Gathering. And it has a lot, I guess it has more to do with playability than finance, but the finance does come into it. So Wizards of the Coast has recently banned Sensei's Divining Top. Uh, Sensei's Divining Top is a card played in a tier 1 deck called Miracles. That deck has been tier 1 for a very long time. And in fact, I had it built before I sold off my extra decks. Now, when we talk about a card being banned, yes, Miracles is still a viable deck, but it's not going to be a tier one deck. Yes, this was an annoying deck to play against, but it has existed for so long that I feel like it's part of the meta. It was a very strong and big part of the meta. So why now? And my criticism here relies on one of my gut feelings for what Wizards of the Coast should do if they're not promoting a format. Legacy would have been okay had they not, had they not interacted with it this way. So every interaction Wizards of the Coast makes with Legacy, my gut feeling is they want to destroy it because they are not promoting it, yet they're still banning cards. Legacy is not a pro tour format. They have, what, one or two GPs a year? They've openly been hostile to Legacy, and then they mess around with it. So my gut feeling is if you care about Legacy, then promote it, put it back on a pro tour. Pros love playing Legacy. It is a very challenging, very skill format. And promote it. Promote it on Twitch, promote it on your YouTube channel, promote it on, you know, on other channels that do legacy, or leave it alone. But don't be destructive towards it if you're not gonna promote it. And that's currently what's happening. A lot of people have miracles made. It is a tier one deck. And Sensei Dividing Top doesn't destroy the deck, but it makes it not tier one. I don't know if it's tier two even. So when you have a big announcement like this, and it is a big announcement for people who play Legacy, people, some people are happy, some people are sad, and the sad people, this happened over time and time again. Um, in modern format, we recently didn't get a banning, but pretty much we got the expertise decks, the breaking and entering, as well as the beck and call decks. You had two different brand new, exciting tier 1.5 modern decks, and both of them got destroyed because you changed, Wizard of the Coast changed how Fuse works, and now it no longer works. Now, what's the alternative? I don't think the alternative is any better. The alternative would be to form a player committee, which we can see what's gonna happen in ED8s. In ED8s, this card is banned I will be the first one to say I love this card. I personally do not play in EDH, but I have played it in more of a casual format. And he's so fun to play with, especially when people are trying to brainstorm and draw extra cards, and he prevents that. Now, is he a super strong card? Yes, he is an incredibly strong card in EDH. Did he deserve to be banned outright? Maybe. But at the same time, at the same time, the problem I see happening over and over again is Wizard and Coast in the example of Fuse and the example of the Expertise decks and the example of Sensei's Divining Top truly gives almost no, there's not a clear indication from them that a ban will happen. I would love to see if they said, okay, Sensei's Divining Top will be banned in six months. Go. Uh, obviously, they would sell much less, much fewer Eternal Master Packs, which would not, you know, whatever that's worth. But uh, it would be honest. And the, the feeling I get is they watch cards go up in price. Then they cut the legs under the cards, like the expertise. Uh, breaking entering is worthless now. Beck and Call. And all those decks, the reanimator, the really exciting reanimator strategy that you had was overnight gone. So you destroyed two 
good, good modern decks. Not tier one, but good modern decks. And now, when you have a, when you're banning a, a card from EDH, you ban like it's pretty much the entire general. Yes, you can pick another general, but this particular general is unique. It has unique abilities. It has a unique card base that you want to pull from. So you're taking a whole deck away. A lot of those cards are interchangeable, just like the Miracles deck. If you have your Tundras, they will still be Tundras, right? They're not going to decline tremendously in value. It's just that it there's no worse feeling than having your deck banned. From Splinter Twin to Malarapod, where the pod got banned, and the half of the Malarapod namesake got banned. Splinter Twin, half that namesake got banned. And when you look at bands and what it actually means, it means someone invested a lot of time and a lot of money in a deck, and now that deck is gone for no other reason than it was either too good or it was too random. And when you have bands in standard, you have bands against Smuggler's Copter. That was a pricey card. It's no longer a pricey card. Emiko, which is the arc villain of the entire block story, I mean, ugh. That's a little out there. And then you, you ban you ban the Reflector Mage, which is no longer a problem, which you could have banned in Coco era, but you decided, to, hey, you know, Coco's gone, but it's not a problem. So let's talk about another card. Uh, another card coming out of the unbanned list in ED8 is the Hulk. The Hulk is very, very good. Obviously, it is combo, combo centric. And it is now a pricey card. It's no longer $3 and 64 cents. It has been rising like crazy because there was unbanned. Uh, many decks are going to want it. It is many clone effects are going to be very good on this card. Uh, Body Double is probably one of the better cards with this. Uh, it's a better combo piece or combo. Uh, it enables a infinite combo. So when cards get unbanned, they go up. When cards get banned, they just plummet into oblivion. One of the things that I, I've always mentioned is you cannot predict unbans. You cannot predict what they're going to ban and what they're going to unban. A lot of people saw that Sahili or not Sahili, the Guardian would be banned. It would be ridiculous if they banned the Sahili, which is... The name, I mean, she is the Planeswalker for the whole Kaladesh block. She is the promo, promotional Planeswalker that we're used to seeing everywhere. And although they have been Emiko, and obviously we know how that went. My gut feeling, and this is just what I feel, is if Amaket does not sell correctly, or if it's not selling a lot, what they would do is they will ban some cards that are top decks today. That could be that could mean they ban Gideon Allies Zendikar. Because I cannot see how Gideon Allies Zendikar is weaker in this set. I can only see him getting substantially better with the other Gideon now. And he's already been dominant. So I don't So what bugs me is they could have banned some things in standard, I feel like. They definitely could have banned um, a Gideon would be a, my choice. My personal choice would be he's been in every top eight pro tour. He's dominant in every definition of the word and meaning he is a four of in any white deck that can play him. They also could have banned the Guardian, which is an uh, infinite combo. And that is a problem in FNM because it's not very interactive and it's not fun to play against. And sometimes the person just draws that perfect hand and curves out and there wasn't very much you could do. But they attacked a format, and there's no other way for me to say it. They attacked a legacy, uh, a format that they do not do not promote heavily, that they, do, they actively, in my opinion, tried to get rid of due to financial considerations. And it would have been better if they just left it alone. Now, the alternative of having an EDH community uh, having the a community of players decide what to ban and what not to ban, that might work. And it is do I mean even in the ED8s, I don't like that they banned 
and unbanned these two cards. But I will accept it because I will accept that it comes from people who have play tested it, who have talked to other judges, who have worked with people, and who have extensively, extensively taken criticism of why these formats are no longer fun. Now, Wizards of Coast is not known to take constructive criticism. They have uh, deleted many comments as MTG headquarters has screenshotted and documented to, um, to a lot. But at the same time, just my, my general feeling is why? You know, why do this and not ban something in standard? You know, why not make standard better? You know, if, if you're selling product and you're worried about legacy and modern taking away from your sales of standard and draft, which you clearly are, why not make it better standard? Why do we have such a crappy standard and then we need to like ban cards and we need to ban entire decks in modern? The expertise decks, those two new decks are no longer around and people are, in, people are kind of forced just to play standard again because there's nothing too exciting. It's always de just Death Shadow. And then in legacy, they took away a tier one deck where a lot of people had copies of and now they either have to find a new deck or they have to play standard. I know the, the whole point of Hasbro and Wizards of the Coast is to make money, but in my opinion, sometimes you can make more money by delivering a higher standard quality product than just degrading the products that are competing with it within your own brand. Um, obviously eternal formats like modern and legacy and ed8s once you buy the deck you have the deck unless they are banned and then you have to buy a new deck but for standard you have to buy a new deck every rotation which is or not even every rotation every time a new set comes out because there will be a new premiere deck it's not a mystery that they printed a ton of artifact hate quality artifact hate in on maquette because they don't like Kaladas and they don't want Kaladas. They don't want more new vehicles to be good anymore. They won't, don't want people to be able to play the cards they already have. They want people to buy the new cards and that is business 101, right? My main criticism about it is if you're not going to promote legacy, then don't interact with it. And I know a lot of people wanted top band and they're really happy about it. I don't think that anyone... I feel bad for the people who have Miracle built and it is not a small amount of people. It is a large amount of people. So yes, it's happy for everyone who doesn't have Miracles, but on the flip side, it could be your deck the next day. Your deck might be tier one today, but it could be banned if it's too strong tomorrow. And that to me is very scary as a Magic player. Anyway, let me know what you think. Leave me a comment below. Bye guys.